Hi, I'm Starsky and welcome to From the Studio on Clubbing TV. And in this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a range of drum machines for different budgets. I've got five drum machines in front of me here, ranging from around 200, 250 euro, all the way up to way over 1500 euro. So quite a diverse selection. And hopefully we can find out which one's best for you. The first and the cheapest one that we look at is the IK Multimedia Uno drum. And you can see it's sort of really small, portable, battery operated. I don't know if you can see that, it's, it's actually on at the minute. So this has got 12 voices, and each of the voices has got a few parameters you can tweak. Let's look at a kick drum, for example. Tune it. Add a bit of snap. Play with the decay. But what you get on top of each of the analog voices is a selection of five sampled voices. So on the snare, for example, we've got the analog sound. And then we've got sample one, sample two, sample three, and sample four. But you're not limited to those samples. There's an anthology pack that you can download. And it's like a library of 40 different drum machines with loads of sounds from, from really obscure things to Simmons kits to the 808 and 909, Korg mini pops and all sorts of madness. But it does mean that you can get so many tones out of this. So if I just play with what's in it at the minute, And if you see here, it's got a stutter and a roll as well. So that just means that you can do odd things live. So and you've got parameter locks as well on it. So if I just try and do a parameter lock now. So you've got the kick drum on three, four and seven. Let's put it on 13. So now let's change the pitch of that one. I've just put on step 13. Let's press record. Hold 13 and then just change the tune. Let's go high, shall we? So there's loads you can get out of this. That analog engine sounds fantastic, doesn't it? And those, those samples have got that real nice 12 bit crunch to them. So the next one to look at is the next least expensive, which is Roland's TR09. And I think you'll agree that sounds like a, a Roland TR909, spectacularly so. And what Roland have done is they've used what they called analog circuit behavior technology. So they've modeled the different components of an electronic circuit and what that would sound like to create the tones in this, rather than just getting a sample and sort of working back from what it sounds like, they've worked back from, or they worked up from how it was originally produced on the circuit board in the first instance, if that makes any sense. But really clever and it's a really nice sounding drum machine this. And it's very true to the original. The way you play it and the way you program it is very true to the clunky, really difficult to use 1980s interface. But you know, once you get used to using something like that, it becomes second nature to you. The only problem you have with this maybe is that it is very small. It's got all the controls that you'd get on the original 909, but they're so small to get your fingers in. It's quite difficult, uh, especially in the dark and, you know, trying to, trying to see exactly which one of those you're playing is, is quite challenging. But these weren't ever really intended to be played live, the original ones at least. You know, you programmed a beat and then you programmed a song and then you pressed play and it played through the whole thing. If you want to play something live, then you're better off using the Roland TR-8.
if you saw my Do It Like DJ Kink episode, you'll have seen me playing around, doing similar things, because that's how he plays this live. And if you look at this compared to the TR-09, you've got lovely bright lights. You can see exactly what's gonna play on what beat. You've got the one, the five, the nine, and the 13 are lit up so it's easy to see. The other trick this has got a bit sleeve is this scatter knob up here. You've got 10 different types of scatter and 10 depths of each, so 10 variations on each. So you've got 100 different scatters. I think the Uno had about nine or 10. So we've looked at the TR-8, the TR-09 and the Uno, but there's loads of others in that sort of sub 300 pound, 350 euro sort of price bracket. Artoria's Drum Brutes, for example. I don't have an Artoria Drum Brute, but they're great little analog drum machines for doing exactly what I've been doing on the TR-8. So now it's time to look at the more expensive end of the market. And we'll start off by looking at the analog rhythm. That's big and beefy, that, isn't it? I really do like the sounds you get from this. That analog engine is just so, so thick. I love it. And I did buy this before I got the TR-09 and the TR-8 and the Uno, which tend to come out of the studio and they go to different rooms and they get a bit more bashed around. This was so expensive. Well over a thousand pound when I bought it. This has its place and it stays in its place. And this is a lot more flexible than the others. Obviously, it's, you know, it's over three times the price or four times the price in the case of the Uno. But it's got analog drum engines, plus it's got samples in here as well. So it can basically make any tone. And each of the engines has got a reverb, it's got a delay in there, there's a compressor, there's a distortion. So it's almost like a studio in a box, this. You can't sample straight onto it, you've got to go sample something from your computer and, and load it in, which is a bit of a faff, but the amount of tones is absolutely phenomenal, and you can buy sample packs for it. So as I say, it's almost like a studio on its own, this. So let's just take a look at how they build sounds on this. You've got different machines for different sounds. So for a kick drum, for example, we've got various options of analog architecture, I suppose you'd call it. Hard, classic, FM, plastic, silky, sharp, and then a synth engine as well. And if we go into something like classic, for example, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things we can play with. So a lot more flexible from the synth engine point of view as well. And the other sounds are similarly flexible as well. And as I say, you can use samples in it and you can buy sample packs or sound packs for it, which are almost like whole tracks in themselves. So here's one you can buy on the site. So almost defeats the object in a way of trying to write your own tracks. I'm not a massive fan of presets, but they're a great way of, of demonstrating exactly how you can use the machine. It's really, really nice, this. So that's my first top end bit of kit. The next one is the Dave Smith Tempest, which is even more expensive. much do I love this thing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. It's not as flexible as the analog rhythm. It can't do as much as the analog rhythm. It doesn't have the overbridge and the connectivity you have with the analog rhythm. There's something about the tone of this that just really gets to me. Every time I play with it, it just brings a huge, huge smile to my face and for hours and hours and for good reason. And that's because programming it is an absolute nightmare. If you're good at synth programming, you can find your way around 
around it, but if it's your first drum machine, you haven't got a hope. The way you sort of build the sounds is from scratch using envelopes and LFOs, and, and you've got four oscillators on each sound. You've got two analog oscillators and two digital oscillators, which have got sort of samples built in, but not samples that you can load in yourself. They're sort of really good for sort of transients at the start of sounds and things like that. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about there, this isn't the one for you, but you can lose yourself for hours and hours and hours. And if you're writing a track, um, this, is, <laughs> this isn't necessarily the one that you're gonna get out. If you're in the studio and you need something quickly, you get the analog rhythm out because you know you're gonna be able to get that kick drum tone by just, like a, like a show there earlier, you go into the kick drum, you choose the type of kick, kick drum that you want, and then you just tweak it until, it until it suits the mix. Whereas this, there's no such thing as the kick drum. It's literally um, a synth engine. So you start off from first principles. Obviously you can load in presets and, and stuff that you've programmed before, but it's very much um, LFOs, envelopes, and the like. And if you don't know what you're doing on it, there's no hope you're gonna program it. But when you do, it's thoroughly engaging and absolutely marvelous. But out of all of these, which is the one for you? But why would anyone need a drum machine anyway? If you've got a door, you've got access to sort of every drum sample that's ever been created. There's all sort of sample packs and drum machines. There's more than anyone could possibly ever want. But the hands-on experience of having a bit of kit in front of you and just sitting there and tweaking and playing is so much more engaging than sitting there with a mouse. And anyone that's got a bit of kit will tell you the same. Although it does take up space and it costs a lot more money. The main differences are analog or digital, if that makes a difference to you. Can you use samples in it or not? Is it easy to play live? Is it easy to get your hands on and, and find out what you're doing and not get completely lost in it? Does it have a song mode so you can leave your drum machine to do its thing while you play with your synths live? The number of outputs may be important to you. You might want to put separate drums on separate tracks so you can start playing with effects live as well. I know I would, and that's why I really like the Tempest and the analog rhythm. Is compatibility with your door and being like an audio interface. So the TR09 can do that as can the analog rhythm, but the TR8 can't, and neither can this. So there's loads of things to think about, and we've only just touched the surface really in this episode, but hopefully it'll give you some sort of understanding of the different things that you might be able to look out for. And don't forget you can watch this whenever you like on Clubbing TV's YouTube channel. It's on our From The Studio playlist. And if you've got any questions or comments, pop them in there and I'll, and I'll answer them if I can. And also, if you really are into your drum machines and your synths, uh, check out my YouTube channel as well. I've done a real big sort of in-depth comparison of the Tempest and the analog rhythm actually, and I've done some demos with the, with the IK Multimedia as well. So quite a lot of stuff on there, quite a lot of me rambling on for hours and hours as well, because there's so much to talk about. So I'll see you in the next episode of From the Studio.